Okay, um, going to share with you my 15 years of living on Skid Row, downtown LA, Skid Row, and um, this place is just, it's, it's just way out. You just, you got so many resources, but you got so many people that just don't want it. You know, they've gotten too comfortable with being on Skid Row. And it's like, this is the life that they chose, uh, a life that I have chose. Um, you often choose this life when you feel hopeless. And um, not only that, it's like, it could be a rush. It could be, uh, it could be a challenge. Uh, it could be really pretty much whatever you want it to be. Um, you decide your own fate on Skid Row. You could be in the wrong places at the wrong time. You could not be an addict and become an addict overnight. I mean, it's just a little bit of everything that goes on. You know, um, I support myself on Skid Row by, um, I like to say, uh, performing sexual favors. That's like a better way of wording prostituting or hoeing. You know, um, I perform sexual favors. Uh, this go round, it's been around where um, I cannot say that I have uh, used condoms because it's like uh, this go round, I had to go hard in the pain. It's like this is nothing like it was, I'll say, eight years ago when I was down here on Skid Row. And now that I'm back on Skid Row, it's like it's almost keeping up with technology. It's like uh, it is. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It is, um, what's that word? Advancing, you know? So it's like uh, the price of drugs have went up. Uh, the price of pussy has went down, excuse my language. And it's like, uh, you could pretty much sell anybody and everything on Skid Row, you know? Everything is for sale, everyone's for sale. And it's like, uh, it's deep. It's really, really deep. And uh, believe it or not, these are people's lives here on Skid Row. This is their hometown. They literally, they'll bash your head in, you know, if they don't know you and you're walking certain blocks on Skid Row. You know, um, part of it's a paranoia of you being a police or, or a snitch or an informant. Uh, and part of it is somebody that's about to retaliate on them. So, uh, I mean, it's just like uh, that saying where they said this is the devil's uh, playground. Well, it truly is. I'm starting to do things that I said I would never do. And uh, it's mentally bothering me, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I... Um, Like I said, I'm starting to do things that I said I would never do. And uh, it's like it's it's nowhere of value, meaning it's, it's not even worth it, you know, because at the end of the day, like I said, I'm supporting myself by working the streets. I don't sell drugs. Um, I don't panhandle, you know. Uh, I just use what I've got, you know. Uh, I want to say my mom's gift and God's gift, you know, so uh, just never say you'll do something until that time comes, basically. That's my advice to you, because when your back is to the wall, you never know what you'll do. And um, it's kind of exciting because it's like, for me, I know this is not my life. So for the people that are on the outside looking in, it's like, you could think what you want to think about me because, again, I know that this is not my life. I know what I'm achieving and how I'm trying to get out of Skid Row um, before being kicked out of Skid Row, believe it or not. You can literally be kicked out of Skid Row. You can be ran out of Skid Row. You can be forced out of Skid Row. And it's like, what the hell? You know, but it's some for real, for real stuff. So before any of that, should happen, you know, I'm taking steps uh, to get out of Skid Row peacefully, hopefully, and, and my, my, you know, in my right state of mind, you know. Um, 
I had a couple of good friends that uh, we used to grind uh, or hustle, as some people call it, together. And uh, they got caught up in the mix. And it's just like um, you got to watch who you hang with, who you roll with, who you smoke with, you know, because it's like uh, if you're with somebody and they're known to do foul shit and they do foul shit, boom, bam, bam. If you're with them when, you're sm when they're smoking, when they're doing whatever, I mean, you're going to you're going to reap the consequences that they reap just as well, because in in someone else's mind, it's like either you had something to do with it, either you knew about it. So it's just so easy to get caught up in the rapture and the bullshit and the drama out here. The, oh, Skid Row is nothing but drama and bullshit. You know, it's man, it's just misery if you like company. So it's like. Um, I'm literally like uh, like fed up with, with getting loaded because the dope isn't shit, you know. Um, it's it's it for one thing, it's it's not what it used to be. I know it's nowhere near what it used to be in the eighties, but then when you take it back to the nineties, it's like half of that. So it's like psh, before I blow my money off on that, that I had to go and you know, like I said. Uh, perform sexual favors or whatever, I'd rather get on my knees and shoot dice and try to turn my money over that way, or I'd rather eat it all up, <laughs> you know? So it's like, um, it's like you've really gotta be strong-minded to be on skit Row, to make it through skit Row, to be able to sit here like I am right now talking to you. Um, I find myself uh, performing sexual favors in alleys and it's like, um, Man, um, who's to say I'm gonna make it out of that alley? You know, who's to say that this guy isn't gonna flip in the midst of, of if we're getting high? Nine times out of ten, I try not to let it be that route. But sometimes when I I need things such as not drugs, but such as food, money to do my laundry, because um, there are no like resources for free laundry. They give you food, but lately the food's been making a lot of people sick. I mean, a lot of people are ODing on the on the particular drug that I that I do, which is crack cocaine. And it's like dealers are so greedy and so thirsty, they rather melt down a pill and whip it up to, uh, with something rather than to go out and purchase at least half of, I mean, I smoke dope. If I can afford $80 worth of dope, I know they can, you know, but uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's not scary because I really fear no man but God, but it's just something to just uh, really, really reflect on. You know, you have to be careful who your suppliers are. You have to be careful of who you accept free drugs from. I mean, one of the things that I, I've, I've done this go around that I said I'd never do was do perform sexual favors for drugs. And uh, I found myself doing that a few times this go around uh, for the simple fact dealers are out trying to make money. They're not trying to spend money. And it's like uh, if they get you know, get off with giving up a few dubs, then they'll do it. But then the cool thing about it, they switch up on, you know, give you maybe two rocks that's, you know, okay. And then the rest of the shit will be straight bullshit. So it's like, uh, I guess that's what I get for going against the grain. And that was one of my rules was not performing, uh, you know, sexual favors for drugs but I found myself kind of being desperate. It was enough that I could trade off for a few things because you get some people down here, their hustle is to, uh, they've got somewhere where they get fast food and it's like, uh, they sell it for a little bit of nothing for the drugs. So I found myself being desperate, like I said, and it was, you know, enough drugs that I could smoke and, you know, kind of live off of, but, uh, Boy, did I have a lot of mad people, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, uh, even though it's, it wasn't my fault, still just that easy how I got caught up in the rapture, you know, not even knowing, you know? So here it is, I'm sitting up smoking on, you know, rocks that I feel came off the same rock when literally it was, you know, half and half bullshit and real. 
So I noticed specifically when the, when this guy said, you know, I'm like, you know, dude, I really don't feel comfortable doing that because I don't know how your product is. So I remember him specifically shuffling them around and eyeballing them to where he knew what he was looking for, but I didn't. So the tester that he gave me was just like, whoa, okay. It took me there. I'm like, okay, let's do this, let's, you know, so. And then I'll say I continue smoking off that same one, and then I kind of, you know, traded off a few pieces, which was not off the one that I was smoking. So I had so many angry people coming back to me saying, "Hey, I want my shit back. You know, this shit is not, uh, it's not real. It's burning up. It's uh, choking me." And I'm like, "Bro, I'm, I'm smoking off the same thing." And it was like, "Hold up, swell up." In my mind, I'm like. Wow, he did give me a couple of pieces. So here it is, this honest person all the time, I'm finding myself somewhat fibby. And I'm not a liar because, you know, my mom always said, if you tell one lie, you have to tell another, you have to remember the other. So I'm getting into a lot of altercations and I mean, I'm fighting a lot and I'm 42 years old. I'm getting too old for this shit. Yes, I was addicted addicted to to getting the money because the money was lovely back then and it was just like um guys paid well and it was not even a 10 minute job i mean i remember guys getting two hour rooms and it would be over within 20 minutes and it's like oh you could stay in the room but then that became a problem because the motel stopped letting the women stay because of chaos so it was it was kind of lovely back then you know um it was fun back then, getting with all the women, us getting dressed, getting ready to go, you know, do our thing. Because during the daytime, the, 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 the guys that was in our circle, some boost, some, you know, uh, did whatever it was they did. And they would, you know, look out for us until nightfall came. Nightfall was time for the girls to get out there, but we would all meet up a uh, daybreak, you know, and everybody had money, everybody had dope, everybody had something new, or they might have thought about somebody and got somebody new. Nowadays, you can't even get a bottle of water from nobody. They want a hit or they want a dollar. And I mean, it's like, wow. Shame will keep you from moving on. It'll stagnate you. So it's like, if you're gonna feel ashamed about anything that you're doing, that my advice to you is not to do it because uh, shame will stagnate you. Shame will make you feel some type of way to where you can't even process, to where you can't, how you say, function. So you will constantly be medicating yourself, you know, meaning using to run from the shame or to hide from the shame. And like I said, th th these drugs are, are not what they used to be. So in, instead of it altering your mind, the shit stays there and then it, it's there even more. And it's like, not only are you feeling shame, you're feeling guilty because you're constantly smoking or medicating yourself and you're not trying to do anything about the shame. So it's like, hopeless sits in self, self wor worthlessness and then all that can either turn into anger or it could give you a nervous breakdown. And that's if you have a conscience. You reap what you sow out here. Um, you think you're untouchable. You think that you're all that. You think you're big and bad. Well, guess what? When karma comes, no size. No, no, no skills. Karma don't give a fuck about none of that. She's coming and she's coming harder than you think. And, uh, you know, it's like, I, I, prefer, I prefer karma as a woman for the simple fact she's just like a bitch when she comes and she's coming for that ass. And she wants everybody to know that you are reaping karma, mean, meaning that she is here, she is present, that you are only reaping what you sowed. And it could be what you thought was something so small to something, to it could be something you did to somebody that you thought was no one. Well, when karma comes, she comes like you fucked with her child or something, you know, and it took her a while to catch up to you, but guess what? 
she caught up to you and she's gonna break you down and she's gonna make you realize that, hey, look, this is karma. I'm the one from all the shit that you did and you thought you got away with it. Well, here I am, tough guy, badass, or untouchable. Now what are you gonna do? So when she's done with you, she can either leave you speechless, meaning dead, or she could give you something, a lot of time to think about, meaning you could wind up in prison for two, maybe not just the, the average life sentence, but maybe the, 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 the a two life sentence. Because it's like, uh, depending on what you've done and depending on your past, your past is gonna come and meet up with karma and they're gonna tag team that ass and it's gonna run concurrent and you're gonna be through his money basically. She is no joke, she is for real. Um, I can't say I've dealt with her, but I've seen her in action and she, like I'm telling you, she is nothing to play with. I advise you to keep it 100, be true to thyself, uh, and you'll be all right. All that thinking you're gonna make a quick come up and it doesn't matter, and that person doesn't matter, or what you're doing doesn't matter. If it's not true, if you're not getting your money or your hustle on real, I advise you not to do it because karma is in the midst of all of that. Yeah, and that's some for real shit. This going, this shit right here now, Mark. Woo, it's it's crazy, man. It's it's man, it's not fun anymore. And that's oh my damn mama, this shit is not fun. You're trying to get out. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, it is time to get out.